get everything that uh, we have that's very important to the public and information that we see fit to, to get out to our people. We definitely need you guys to help us get that message out. So uh, thanks again for coming and taking time to help us get the uh, information out to our people. <coughs> My name is Tracy Beatty. I'm the sheriff here in Ohio County. Um, here at Ohio County Sheriff's Office, I'm dedicated to serving our citizens and protecting life and property. Uh, as the Ohio County Sheriff, it's very important that we continue to investigate current crimes as well as our ongoing cases. Um, we can't just uh, overlook uh, cases that we've worked in the past. We, uh, we want those fully investigated also, not just our current happenings. Today I'm pleased to announce that we have uh, made an arrest on a case that started over two years ago. Uh, this arrest, uh, arrest involves several uh, incidents of arson, burglary, and criminal mischief. There have been over 20 structure fires throughout Ohio County during this two year period. Uh, my investigators uh, Detective Sergeant Tim Hatfield and Detective John Costello brought the Kentucky State Police Arson Investigator Mike Smith and Deputy Fire Marshal, State Fire Marshal Phil Fogel in during their investigation to utilize uh, their expertise in arson investigation. <coughs> Excuse me, as a combined effort, this investigation has now produced an arrest. Elmer E. Duncan has been arrested on 20 counts of separate arson second degree cases, one count of burglary third degree, and two counts of criminal mischief. The uh, string of, of arsons occurred between November 2012 and December 2014. The arsons also involved mostly abandoned homes and barns. Thankfully, no injuries occurred during these crimes. The majority of the arsons occurred in Chiggerville, Eccles, Rockport, Centertown, Beaverdam, Hartford, and McGain. Duncan was developed as a suspect in December 2013. During the next year, detectives continued to, to gather evidence until Duncan was connected to the arsons in December 2014. On January 26 of this year, detectives pulled Duncan over for questioning. We actually had gotten a report uh, from a family member that he uh, may have been, uh, uh, he kind of knew that we were on to him and he was a little disgruntled. And we made a traffic stop. The Kentucky State Police uh, actually made the traffic stop for us. Uh, we were all in search of his vehicle. Kentucky State Police stopped the vehicle and arrested him for DUI yesterday uh, here in Ohio County, uh, down in the uh, Rockport area. <clears throat> uh, after questioning uh, Mr. Duncan, uh, the detective presented the Ohio County Attorney with a list of charges. And uh, I will turn those uh, charges and let my detective Sergeant Tim Hatfield explain to you the uh, charges that he's being charged with and what they consist of. At this time he's been charged with 20 counts of arson second degree. Arson second degree is a class B felony. A person is guilty of arson second degree when he or she starts a fire with the intent to destroy or damage a structure or building. Uh, he's also been charged with burglary third degree and also two counts of criminal mischief. One of the criminal mischiefs was for burning uh, eight hay bales on somebody's property and the other one was for slashing tires on two different vehicles. Does anybody have any questions? The, the uh, fires, where were the midst of the towns of what were there? Can you tell us like where some of the ones about the structure were? 
Yes. Uh, it, most of them occurred in the uh, Sugarville area, Eccles, and Rockport. That's where the majority of them occurred. We did have three out of 14, 14 uh, in between Hartford and uh, Deanfield. We had uh, two in McGann and one on Highway 69. And then we also had uh, two in Beaver Dam. What can you tell us about the information that led to Duncan being considered a suspect and is then ultimately his arrest? That, uh, we developed him as a suspect in 2013 and, uh, well, the end of 2013, the summer of 2013. And uh, I can't really discuss on how we developed him as a suspect. We still have an ongoing investigation on these cases. What else can you tell us about the burglary charges he's also facing? Uh, well, that's just one count of burglary. It was for one of the houses that uh, he later burned the top of the uh, taking out his own home. Do you know how he was doing all this burning? Was he time gasoline? Do you know how? I can't go into specifics of the physical evidence. This, this is very fresh. The county attorney signed the warrants this morning. Uh, we interviewed him Monday, and uh, we presented 21 cases to the county attorney yesterday afternoon. Uh, Tim, two years. Uh, you have an arrest now. How does that feel? Relieved. Relieved. It's been one of the bigger challenges since I've been here because it had went on for so long, I guess. So, yeah, the arsons are a hard one to solve. How were these first determined to be arsons? I'm sorry? How were they first determined to be arsons? You know, the first, first couple of fires, how were they determined to be arsons? Well, what we do is we call out the uh, fire marshal Bill Fogel comes and examines the fires. These fires in particular were actually initially ruled as undetermined because there was no accelerants uh, detected. However, uh, the, there was no electricity, no uh, gas or anything like that act, currently activated at these homes. At this time, uh, are you able to comment on a possible motive for setting these fires? No, I can't. I can't comment on that. What were the frequency of the fires? Were they happening, you know, in bunches or just spread out? Or that's a very good question. They were actually uh, consolidated to winter time. They would start uh, more towards the end of December, or excuse me, the end of November. <coughs> beginning of uh, January, and then they would uh, be very sporadic. There was no set days of the week or anything like that uh, for a couple months. Mm. Uh, I think it went into, in 2012, it went into uh, March. Uh, we had a couple in February, and then we had one in March. Excuse me, yeah, one in March of 2012. And, uh, the, so it, it, the majority of them were during the winter. And you said that one of them hadn't been, been the hay bales. Were, the, were those the hay bales out of Rochester Road by the open pass? Yes, is that near Apple House? Yeah, the because it yeah. seems to me that around that time, within like two or three weeks, there were several fires, including some in the city of Hartford. I remember one maybe on Taffy, definitely along 1414. Or, or, was he the culprit in some the, of those fires? The one on 1414 was actually, that one at that time, when the hay bells were lit, that was an unaffiliated fire. He, he didn't, that was totally something. <laughs> I, I just remember speaking 
with several Hartford City officials because they were, you know, rumors get started when two or three fires happen, but they can all be coincident. And I just remembered the hay bales, and I remembered two or three here, and maybe a couple, just all of them seemed like Christmas time. Well, the night of the hay bales, there was actually three fires that night. Again, this is this is all this has all been possible because of a joint effort with the state police, Mike and Phil Fogel. And uh, if it wasn't for our teamwork uh, with with our detectives and the state police and the fire marshal's office, uh, this this wouldn't have been possible. Tim has uh, he along with John, they have put in numerous hours, man hours uh, that we we couldn't even start to determine how many of those hours were. Uh, but with that joint effort uh, and their, their uh, continued uh, investigations, uh, we've, we've luckily uh, have a suspect and arrest in this case. We're very proud to have that. And proud of their work in this investigation. Anybody else have anything? Or? You can't say anything about how you connected them to these fires? Not at this time. There, there are other pending investigations uh, that we have, and, and we wouldn't want to spoil those cases by, by releasing too much information. So, so keep in mind that we, we still have others that we're looking into. Uh, as Tim said, this is very fresh, and uh, we haven't even gotten a, uh, just got the warrants this morning. Uh, we, we, we made some charges last night on him uh, once we determined that we had enough to charge him with after seeking the county attorney. Uh, so we will, you know, this is, hasn't even made it to court yet, so bear with us and understand that we're still in, in the investigation. So there's a possibility that he could be connected to it's very possible. other open yes. cases? Yes, very possible. All the families of the Yes, most of them have made reports with the detectives uh, or the state police on uh, the actual structure fires or, or the buildings or what have you. Uh, do you expect to have any more additional arrests in the future with this case? It, it's very possible. Uh, like I said, they, uh, the state police have their own investigation and, and our guys are still looking into other uh, fires that occurred in this time period maybe even beyond that time period. So yes, I would, it would not surprise me if there were more charges or arrests in this investigation. Were any of the, the I, I think you said most of the structures were abandoned, were there any that were just found burned or were they actually called out? Yes, uh, there were some that, that the property owners had no clue that they had been burned. Uh, you know, some of them didn't live directly on the property, so uh, they come to find out later on that those buildings or older homes that were on mm -hmm. those properties had been burned. So. So there was even a few that the fire department weren't called out on the money that
make sure that we look into some of those other cases, that, uh, even some of our cold cases here, and not forget about those. They've done an excellent job with this case. I'm sorry, to, make, to follow up on what Jonathan from WFI said, but just to make sure I understand, are you, are you looking at additional suspects, or are you thinking there's going to be additional charges against Mr. Dunn? Well, again, it's preliminary. Uh, we're still uh, learning more into the investigation. Um, at this time, I don't think we suspect anyone else that would be involved, but it's, it is a possibility. Uh, like I said, it's, it's very premature uh, in our investigation, preliminary. So, you know, I, I, can't, I can't tell you for sure that there's not, and, and I won't let them say that we, we're not looking at that. But we're going to explore all avenues and make sure that we cover each and every angle of the case. So it's very possible that, you know, there could have been more fires and, and, and maybe even involved more people. So. But, but as, as of right now, we don't suspect that, but it, it, it could be later on in the case. And I have some sort of question that you just saw on camera. Was Duncan a resident of the Highland County? Yes, yes. Is, uh, he is a resident of our county. And uh, we, uh, like I said, we got a call yesterday and uh, we made an arrest here in Ohio County. You know? Have there been issues with him in the county? Uh, no, uh, you know, other than the investigation that they have going now, but no other uh, offenses that I can recall or that we've had any dealings with him in the past. Thank you. 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 Th